we are one year old officially as uh, Shimwari TV. And that's, uh, that's all thanks to you guys, the viewers and the subscribers. Good morning everyone, a really special episode this morning. We are one year old officially as uh, Shimwari TV and that's, uh, that's all thanks to you guys, the viewers and the subscribers. You know what started off just over a year ago as a short little lockdown series, trying to keep people motivated and uh, up to date with wildlife and what was happening has now evolved into, uh, into this really, really good and constant content for you guys. Yeah, if you haven't subscribed, give it, a, give it a like, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It'll help ensure that we get more content out there more regularly and we've got some really big plans. So uh, yeah, thank you very much. And we hope to see more of you out there with us in the bush. So it's a beautifully fresh morning out here on Shamari Private Game Reserve and what I'd hoped to do is go out and find some lions and for a very specific reason. And we've just managed to get a location on them up ahead here. So I'm going to make my way there and approach. And then I'm going to show you why it's been such a, a mission of mine this morning to find these lions. So how great is that? But we've seen lions many times and there's nothing special particularly about these guys sleeping. You can see we've got some, some full tummies here which means they probably had a, a kill last night. But have a look at that young male over there. Remember back in one of our earlier episodes when we had these youngsters that had been hunting a springbok in the, in the, in the dry riverbed as we were out on one of our early morning drives. So as to what happened here and how, uh, it, it's always quite difficult when you didn't see what happened. But if you look at where we're sitting over here, we've, we've come down into a river crossing, a drift. And you've got these very steep banks on either side over here. This is a very dangerous area for animals to come down to get to water to drink. And you'll see they're very, very nervous because this is where predation takes place, as, as we've now seen. Lions are very clever. They'll use this as an opportunity because you've got an environmental barrier over here. It's a, it's a region where an animal can be slowed down somehow, whether it's trying to escape up the road or up these banks. And the lions will use all of this to their advantage when hunting. As to who brought it down, there's a couple of adult females here as well. I doubt the sub-adults would have done it solely by themselves. They definitely would have had the help of the adult females. But more and more, as these guys are getting older, they're getting more and more involved in the hunts. And the females are allowing them to do a lot more of the, the final holding down of the carcass. Once they catch it, possibly move off as soon as the cubs arrive, they'll stand back and then actually the, it's, it's a bit gory, but the, the final killing will be done by the youngsters. It's their way of learning, it's their way of figuring out what works and what doesn't. And at the end of the day, they don't want what they've caught to manage to get away somehow. You can see some of the, the older sub-adults have got quite big stomachs. In other words, they've eaten a lot of meat. And a couple of the smaller cubs, the, the much younger litter, almost no meat in their tummies. So again, a, a definite hierarchy at a, at a lion kill. The biggest and strongest eats first and gets the lion's share. I think that's the important thing is over the last year, how we've seen these guys go from really uh, bumbling sub-adult, uh, almost cubs, uh, unable to hunt. Look at the size of that guy now, they're getting involved in the hunts. We saw them uh, a week or two ago, how they had 
managed to try and get involved in a giraffe hunt, although it was failed, but they're now starting to hunt actively. And it's, it's really going to be interesting over the next year uh, as we see the pride dynamic starting to change, interactions with other prides, uh, and as these guys possibly start becoming competition for the dominant male, they'll get pushed out uh, and we might be able to start following them as nomadics. Uh, we don't know yet, it's just it's really exciting to watch that progression and it's, it's been really great over the last year as we can watch how they're starting to grow uh, and form a, a cohesive pride and, and get involved and actively start hunting. So in one of the really early episodes we had all of these youngsters and the southern pride on that hippo carcass and a lot of the stuff, the, the playing and fooling around, it seems like just that, but it's so important to teach them as learning behavior, how to behave around a carcass. It'll start establishing pecking orders, even at that young age. So we looked at pride territories on one of the earlier episodes, particularly with this big male over here. And even on another episode with Jan when he was up in the north with the northern pride. What I am starting to notice is this guy is tra traveling less and less up to the north. And what we might find is uh, he's eventually going to uh, completely pull himself away from that pride and just focus all of his attention on the southern pride females over here. We might have a, another youngster or even another male that takes over that northern pride. Then the boundaries are set. This male won't uh, hold both territories. So to talk about uh, you know, why the male's not here and who the father of the little cubbies is, and you will recall that Andrew mentioned a couple of episodes ago about how one dominant male can be, if you want to say, the leader of both prides or more than uh, one pride or multiple prides. And that's literally what, we, what we're seeing here. Our dominant male down in the south that was initially introduced into the Northern Territory made his way down to the Southern Territory eventually, pushed the Southern male out of his territory. He became a nomadic male. He literally fathered the Northern Pride and the Southern Pride at the moment. So. His little offspring is currently thriving up in the north. We're now almost at that cusp where these guys are going to start becoming competition for the male. 
and they're going to have to decide what is their next move and they're going to get kicked out where they're going to go to they're going to become nomadic it's going to be a struggle for survival for the first few years alone but it's the important lessons they've learned now as cubs play fighting and around carcasses and being taught how to hunt that'll get them through those tough years of being nomadic males so with spending over 20 years in the bush one year has kind of passed into the next and you look back at memories and that but I think the fantastic thing for me for the last year is having this reference to almost a timeline. You know, if I look at the bush, how it's changed in the last year in some aspects greatly, in other aspects not so much. We've still got areas of forest biome around over here that looks like we're not even in a drought when you go in there. Other areas you can see this grass, how dry it is, how the lions are blending in so well and camouflaged into this area. Let's hope our summer rains are early this year and this area will just be green and lush. We, we had hippos in water early on in the episodes where we were still spending time along the river line. At the moment, so much of the river is all dried up. Let's hope the drought is gonna break soon. But it's just been amazing for me that there's been this timeline where I can go back to, oh yeah, a few episodes ago, we were with hippos in the water, now walking in dry riverbeds. And definitely not forgetting over the last year, we've looked at a lot of the smaller stuff, how the bush fits together, all the little intricate little links within the chain that make the bush work. We can't forget about them and we haven't and we won't. We're gonna carry on looking for that stuff. I'm looking forward to summer, uh, our spring explosion where the bush just comes to life with all the little small things. We'll hopefully have a, a couple of episodes on that for you as well. It really has been a privilege, it's been great. Happy birthday for one year to Shimori TV and uh, yeah, carry on watching we want to keep the content coming keep sending your comments we appreciate all of it uh, and it's those comments that will kind of develop and and uh, put together future episodes for us so thank you very much it's all down to your support and we look forward to way more of it